In the previous episode, the town of Evergreen became the city of Evergreen. The city's new mayor, Cara Begay, worked with the city council to hire Governor Johnson's recommended planning firm, Sterling Planning and Design, to lay out their new city expansion. The firm presented the concept of the transect to city residents when discussing their plans. The idea of the transect is that neighborhoods will have different densities, intensities, and building scales depending on their context within the community. The closer to the core of the community a building is, the higher the density and intensity of development will be, the smaller the setbacks will be, and the larger the building will be. The inverse relationship is true as well. In this episode, we'll focus on creating that transition between our low density residential and historic part of our town to our new downtown. We'll thoughtfully place buildings in this area using the Find It mod, focusing on density in ways that make sense for a community of this size, and we'll mix uses. We'll also start building a new park that we mentioned in the previous episode right about here, and we'll make a few fixes based upon your feedback and name some more streets. And if you were one of the folks that noticed the problem with this roundabout in the last episode, please hit the like button. And if you didn't, why don't you hit the like button for that too? And leave a comment to show YouTube that you like the videos. I'd really appreciate it. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Evergreen in Nicolay Bay. And I'm really excited about today's episode because we're gonna really customize Evergreen and make it feel like a unique place with vanilla assets. And I just wanna demonstrate that it is possible and it can be really nice looking. So we're gonna to need to call a couple of mulligans. I zoned in some of these areas, number one, to meet some of the residential demand, and number two, because I wanted to jump power. Not the height of realism, that's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna figure it out. <laughs> so the way that we're gonna do that is to eliminate a whole bunch of stuff right now. Let's do that right now. Oh, and that feels good. The only thing that doesn't feel good is I think that we're gonna have a power problem. Yep. <laughs> so we better get a temporary power line in there so that we don't lose our downtown. Very good. Now, let's talk a little bit about what we're gonna do. So I want to really be thoughtful about our development through here, and we're gonna fill in just this area right here, the downtown block right here and through here. It's not very much space. When you think about how quickly we filled all of this in, it was just basically zoning it all through, but we're gonna place all these manually. So that said, we're gonna be using our find it mod extensively. But if we were to just go ahead and grab a building, a house and place that down, let's say we just place it here, over time, this thing will level up. And that is not what we want. Well, we want it to level up. We don't want it to change its form. And I can show you what it would do if we click here and we go to force. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, so this version of the Kent residence is exactly what I want to avoid. Now you might just say, why don't you just use the, uh, the building themes mod? And, and truthfully, in the future, we probably will. Uh, but for the time being, we're gonna really thoughtfully place this. So the way that we're gonna solve this problem is actually to go into our options and then go into Rico Revisited under Growable Options. We're gonna make all plopped growables historical, including our non-Rico growable buildings. This building is not historical, but if I clone it now and paste it there, look at that, it's historical. Now this will never change, which is exactly what we want. So I want to really give some thought to the land uses that we want here. Now we're gonna to respond to our RCI meter for the most part. When what that means is we are going to have a whole bunch of residential, just bluntly. So I think around here, we're gonna go with something, you know, maybe a little uh, unique, maybe some art deco buildings. We'll have some single family in the, this block right here, including this cul-de-sac area. And then we'll transition into some duplexes. And then as we get closer to the downtown area, I want some three to four story buildings, maybe even a five story building sprinkled in here and I want to mix the uses along the main street. So it's a mixture of housing, commercial and office space. And we're going to need to have some sort of college to, to, to bridge the gap. We need a college, a, a proper college soon, but we're going to do something temporarily. Some, something maybe a little cheeky, but we'll, we'll make it happen. All right. So let's get started. And I want to start here because I think this is going to be a really special location. Let's go in to find it because we're going to be using this extensively today. We're going to make this bigger and we're gonna be using our extra filters panel. So pop into here and we can go into building height. So this is gonna be really key for what we're doing today. And what I want you to do, if you're, if you're thinking of doing this, we're gonna go into our high density buildings and let's say I don't want a bunch of towers. I want something that's reasonable and small. See, I'm gonna go into custom so we get just our art deco buildings. It's weird. Some of the 
content creator packs will show up as vanilla and others will show up as custom. I just happen to know that Art Deco shows up as a custom building. Here though, what I want you to focus on is the, that it says 14 meters or 47 feet tall. And this one says 67 feet tall or 20 meters. So the reason why this is so important is it gives us some instructions. So if we wanna narrow down our buildings by height, So let's say we really like the height of this building. We could now come through here and say we want buildings that are between 45 and 50 feet tall. And we can hold down shift to get all of our residential buildings. And I have meters right now, so feet. And what you can see is I actually have a number of buildings available to me. So in the residential alone, if I wanted to keep that same height, now I have a number of buildings that I could, I could work into this area. So that's the way that we're gonna terrace things up. We're not done with our Art Deco buildings yet, so let's come back in here. You might be thinking, wow, this is really sloppy, Phil. This is your worst work yet. And <laughs> if I were to leave it, leave it like this, it would be. But we're gonna improve things. So I selected all these with Move It, and inside of Move It, we're gonna go into our lineup objects. Now what that does is gives us a nice separation back here between our different buildings. Look at that, they're absolutely perfect. And we can do the exact same thing over here. Select, 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 and line up objects. Perfectly spaced. And the main thing here is to make sure that the two sides are exactly where you want them to be. I knew that they were where I wanted them to be, so now we're good. With this building, I think we're gonna scoot this one over. So we'll give some separation, and we'll add some landscaping back here to make it feel just a little bit better. And I want to change the colors of these buildings. These are pretty, it, it, the colors feel to me a little bit drab and maybe it would be you know I, I wouldn't say that the Midwest is known to have the most exciting color palettes on buildings but sometimes but sometimes so let's look at the other mod that I added so I've added the repaint mod so very simple mod you click on a building and it gives you this little panel right here and this panel allows you to go through and set the color so now we can have a nice pink building if we want come through here maybe we have a pastel yellow building and when we have buildings side by side that have the same color we can just go and go ahead and change it so i'm just going to go through make a couple more modifications so now it has a sense of character and i like that to me that feels very 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 unique now i believe that our power should be jumping now so i'm going to get rid of that power line and then just double check yeah we're doing fine we're doing fine and while we're in here let's look at our water and we are all watered up through here, except for this area. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Now through here again, I said I wanted to increase the height. So let's go ahead, we'll narrow this down by height and we're gonna go 50 to 60 feet tall. Now we could just grab some of these, whatever we want, whatever suits our fancy. And it looks like these, let's see how these tenements look. I don't, I don't love those. So I'm gonna go just a little bit taller and we'll see what else we get. Th th this height though, works well in my opinion <laughs> that is actually awesome that is awesome we are going to pull this one over that is amazing evergreens right on the side of the building i wish there was a way to to actually <laughs> to get more buildings to have that on there it feels like it's a really fitting uh, design so the other thing that we could do i'm gonna drop this down we'll go 40 and i'm gonna get rid of the low density now this one is interesting to me. So it's just a little, it's about this actually the same height. And the fit is really nice. I think we're gonna go with a, a few of these. And then I'll come through and bring this closer on either side. And then again, use our lineup trick. And very, very nice. Now, it is difficult to see. Uh, the one thing about my visual settings is that it is very darkly shadowed on one side. And I spent probably more time than I should admit trying to fix that. I got it to look okay, but it looks very, very pale. And maybe in a live stream, I'll show you what that looks like and we'll decide uh, if if there's any interest in, in switching to that. But in the meantime, I feel like the build doesn't feel like the build without it uh, looking this way. So I think we're just gonna stick with it for the time being. Now let's go through and have a mixture of some of these new wall to wall and green cities dlc buildings i just want to make sure though that the height isn't too much we're going to drop down again 60 so we have our maybe our, our tallest building at the end here by the water and now i want to filter out this stuff so this is a one by one that's not okay 
We want these to be at least four deep. Oh, 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 oh. Always got to make sure this is selected. <laughs> now that's a little better. And now I think that we could go back up to the 70 and see what we get. Little better. And we're just going to pull some of these through. Now I'm going to leave a gap here because we're going to want a pedestrian connection through here. This is a very long block. The other way, remember, that we could handle this is I have the random button set up. And now I have a very specific need here, a four by two building. So I'll narrow this down and see that I don't have one. <laughs> so we'll go all there and see what we have. Let's see if I got a three. Nope. That is unfortunate. And the only thing that will work is actually our European buildings. So I'm not into that at all. So instead of doing that, we will just go ahead, scoot this building over, and then we'll go with some two by two buildings focusing over this way. There we go. Now, you might have noticed that when I was operating over here, clearing things out, there was a laundry mat right here and I removed that. It's because we're gonna decorate around here as well and I want this to feel like a park space so we're gonna it's gonna be the transition zone between all of our density and our park over here now in this area I want to we're gonna have a bit more density we're gonna step it down here again and then we're gonna go into duplexes in this area so let's take our heights and I'm gonna say 30 to 50 and I'm gonna go with just vanilla and <laughs> we do not have very many options available to us so going in I grabbed our single family to see if that would help so semi-detached might work for us. So I'm going to use that as a search term. And yeah, this will do the trick for us. So I'm not sure if you've been in one of these neighborhoods where you see that they have a whole bunch of the same building over and over and over. And you might wonder to yourself, who planned this? Why is this? Why would this ever be OK? It would be OK, uh, basically because this is affordable housing. This is the kind of housing that you would put up very quickly and it would absolutely serve a need for the community. And that is what we are uh, basically emulating right now, the affordable housing. Now I left a one unit gap there and I'm regretting that. We're gonna need to do something to, to, to resolve this. There we go. Now I would, the other thing I, I would see happening here would be maybe these being the same color as, as boring as that is. So we could certainly do that through here if we wanted to. I think we'll try to have patterns of colors. So we'll come through here and we can copy this color and then come through and just paste it. There we go. A little bit of order in here. So we are going to also line this up here. And I thought about running a road through here, but I'm not really, I'm not really into that idea anymore. We're going to spread these out and it's interesting. I'm noticing that I've colored this building to be the same as these, but it's facing these ones. So we're going to change that. There we go. And now they have this common area that the residents in this apartment could, uh, this apartment complex could use for recreation. So I'm going to add in a few things back here. Nothing huge. But I do think that just to add a, a bit of dignity back here, we'll add some pads through here and then we'll add in some playground equipment. So let's go ahead and add in some paths. It's funny, they have these high level spinning wheels. So where I grew up, they called them a merry-go-round. And I, I actually broke my collarbone on one of these things. My dad was spinning me around and round and round and I begged him to go faster and faster and faster. And I fell off. <laughs> I did not have strong hands. And as a result flew right off. I think it's the worst my dad has ever felt about uh, something that we've done. And I apologize if you're listening, dad, I don't think you are. So <laughs> it'll, it'll be fine. Either, either way, uh, I broke it and then, and then, so it's helping my mom. I was probably nine years old. Uh, my parents lived apart. They were divorced. And I was helping my mom up, up the stairs of our apartment with a Christmas tree because I had just about healed. I tested it. It's fine. And I fell down the steps and I rebroke my collarbone. And that is the story of how for a half a year, I had a broken collarbone. <laughs> it was, uh, they, I, I called myself X-Man because I had this brace that uh, went across my chest, made an X. So it was... 
It was a lot of fun. <laughs> so, you know, I guess it's an excuse to play video games all day, even though I couldn't really move. <laughs> so there we go. Now we'll add some trees, but at the end, we're gonna add our landscaping. Now through here, uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna look for detached again. So detached is an interesting tag because you can find things like this, which is a, honestly, as long as you don't put them side by side with something else, it's a nice looking asset. It's a pretty nice looking asset. So you've got stuff like that. But then if you look around, there are duplexes right here. This is a duplex. So we're going to place this. They're not the most attractive duplexes in the world, but I do think that they'd be affordable. So we'll place a couple of those there and then we're going to go for something a little bit taller. And I wanted to see what we had available to us in our green cities DLC. And we don't have a lot, truthfully, but we do have some townhomes and we might add just a, a row of these and then we'll add some park space behind them. Now, I think this looks pretty terrible alternating colors like this. So what we'll do is we'll just, why don't we create a pattern with these? There we go. Nothing all that elaborate, but just something to feel a little bit better. And in terms of the park space, I don't think we need anything elaborate there either. Just, and truthfully, it might just be a nice little walking path back here. And then we'll add in a couple of benches as well. And then to give these duplexes some privacy, we are going to add a fence right there and say that this is part of the common area for these townhomes. Yeah, I like that a lot. Like that a ton. Now through here where we have kind of a plus pattern, that's where we're going to add landscaping to that particular area. Now over here, we're going to have our density drop off. And in fact, I might continue this repeating pattern. There we go. And over here, we're going to watch our densities totally drop off and we're going to have single family homes back here. We don't even need our heights anymore. We don't need to worry about that because we can just go in and filter it to our low density. Now with this, I think the bigger concern is going to be the size of the buildings. I'm going to go with three by three. And I want to see what we have now. I really don't want any of this stuff. So maybe this time around we look at building level and we say a minimum of two. So that would filter out all of this university stuff. They're all level one and we'll do max of four. And if we do that, it should get rid of most of the funkiest stuff. OK, so I have painstakingly gone through and added tags to a whole bunch of buildings. So the way that I've done this is I've gone through and if you highlight over, you can see that there is this tag. So you click on this and you can add a tag that you either have existing right here or you could type in a new one. So I've created the tag ever for evergreen. And what we're going to do is get rid of all of our filters and then I'm only going to show the tag and I'll have to refresh this because my tag isn't showing up yet. So that's one of the limitations of the mod. But now that I have this, it presents us an opportunity. So let's get rid of all of my testing and we can randomize these through here now. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit my question mark key and you'll see that it's going to start just giving me random homes. And if I hit it twice, and here's one that I actually do not want the tag on. So this is our duplex. So I'll come through here, come over, click on ever. And now it's gone. I've got to refresh this again and we're good. Okay. So you can see that I've just been randomizing these and putting these through here, trying to do something that feels fairly natural. We've got some strange rooftops through here. We're going to change up some of those. So basically what we'll do is we'll come through and I'm just going to make the color black and some of these, it looks like I can't actually modify them. So maybe we'll have to deal with a few straggler red rooftops. We could get rid of those if we wanted to remove them from our tag, but it's probably not the end of the world. I'm going to pull this in. We don't want the cul-de-sac to basically be touching this road. So I added this Mediterranean style villa and we'll put that right here. I want to see if we can change the roof on this. We cannot. All we can do is change the fence, <laughs> which is kind of weird. So I'm going to get rid of that and we'll just add that back here. And then we'll just finish off with a few more homes. And right here, you don't always have to develop something. And I think in this particular instance, we won't. We're going to leave that completely vacant. We're also going to leave this vacant and call it a day there. So what we'll do is add in a fence along here. Let's do that right now. And 
nice little neighborhood here on the cul-de-sac. So I'm sure that there would be a number of people that would find this to be an interesting place to be. And that large lot might be the developer of that entire area. So we've got one more block that I want to focus on, and this is arguably our most important block. We're going to totally mix the uses through here and think about some larger uses. The very first thing I want to do, though, is an educational facility, one that we really need, and it's going to be temporary. We have this faculty building. It has a fairly low student capacity, 800 for a university, but it's going to more than meet the needs of our little city. Oh, oh Metropolis. <laughs> there we go. What do we get? We get airplanes, airports, and cargo airports. That's, that's it. That's all we get. <laughs> so, good enough. So I'm going to put that right downtown. And I think that this is going to be a polarizing decision, but I really think that we need it. When we build a university, which will be sooner rather than later, we are going to, we're going to do something a little bit nicer and we're going to decommission this. And we even have a name for it already. And if you are the commenter, Patrick, you know exactly what the name is. So I'm, I've, I'm saving that and we're going to definitely use it. Now, coming through here, I want to really give some attention to this area and right now it's looking pretty drab if we're being completely honest wonder if we could upgrade some of these just to make it look a little bit nicer hmm, didn't work there <laughs> that didn't work at all so let's just get rid of some of these so just a little bit of a mulligan ah oh, shoot i meant to stop these i meant to stop these this is not okay so i i do I'm unsure, and I want you to leave a comment if we should have buildings along the side of this park or not. If we do, we're gonna be more organized than this. This is absolute madness, and we're not about madness. Not in Evergreen, we are about control. So let's go ahead and we'll eliminate this for the time being, but let me know. Do you like the idea of buildings around here? Should we just have a nice landscaped park space? Now here, I don't know that we're gonna get, we're gonna get rid of all of these, but we are gonna get rid of some of them. And let's start fresh down here. I think that we can do better. So what we're gonna do is come back through here and we'll start out again, we'll go for building heights and let's keep our building heights fairly minimal to start out with. Now, the interesting thing, we'll, we'll, we're gonna focus on the size of the building. We'll try to get four by four, three by four. We'll go with our low density commercial, then we'll add in some high density and try to make sure that our heights aren't too tall. I like the idea, even though we have this Rondo Cinema, having another theater down here, that we just had this growing in Verde Beach, and I absolutely adore the way it looks. And we can add in, we have one central hotel, why not, why not two? There we go, we've got like a, a little art deco district. They aren't wall to wall, which I think is a little bit unfortunate, there's a lot of parking, but we can live with a bit of that. Now we're going to move into more of a historic Main Street sort of pattern. So let's look through here and see what we have available to us. So the types of buildings that I'm looking for here, I want buildings that have a setback that is minimal. Now we talked about that and this, ah, oh, like that is perfect. Even though I think it's a very ugly building, <laughs> it is respecting that setback that we tried to set up for ourselves. So I'm gonna scoot this back over here and we'll use this as kind of the 1970s style building that has that faux front and then we'll line it up perfectly with this historic building. And you can see how the planners have required this sort of deal. Now this, oh, this, this kills me. Whenever I see a building like this in a downtown, it means that they've rebuilt it and that's what was deemed to be acceptable. <laughs> and it's just really unfortunate. Having parking in the front of these, you'll hear it from, from certain developers that they just have to have parking in the front, otherwise the building will not be viable. I don't believe it for a minute. I'm sorry, I've seen it. I think we've all seen it where a building is totally viable and uh, there it's there's, there's no parking in the front. You can't see the parking when you go up to it. You see it's in the back and it's totally fine. The university city pack actually seems to have some of the best options available to us. So I think we're going to go heavy on university city, which might seem like an odd choice, but uh, truthfully, they just they look pretty historic and we can easily pull that forward and pull these buildings together to make something that looks pretty nice. And I'm I'm going back and forth because my, the problem I have is this, we're not really following the transect when we have these one or two story buildings. And that was our goal, was to follow that. So 
I'm going to come back through and see if there's anything that we can do here. And some of these buildings, these vanilla buildings, just aren't very detailed. They've got lots of craziness going on. We're just going to try to modify them to make them look a little bit better and see if we can pull some of these forward. Like the octopus just needs to go. <laughs> I think that we can all agree that the octopus has to go. So I'm narrowing this down to 70 and 80 and trying to find some buildings that look a little bit nicer. I want them to blend in well. So like that building looks really nice and historic. I think this one could as well. There we go. That is what I was going for. And that to me feels a ton, a ton, 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 ton better. So we can absolutely alt B these and try to get rid of some of the obnoxious stuff on here. So things like the octopus, they'll take the probability down to nothing. And the building already looks about a thousand times better. Just getting rid of that silly octopus sign. So we'll go with that. And now we've only got a little bit more and I don't want any auto oriented uses down here. So we'll get rid of those and we'll again, continue our pattern down here. Now we held a gap here. We got to make sure that we're maintaining that in the downtown too. We don't want a road, but we don't want to block our pedestrian connection. And I'm really, really, really liking these modern city center. And truthfully, they look pretty darn good in this area. So I'm going heavy. Now I went too heavy and I blocked that pedestrian connection. I just said that we need to maintain. So. Okay, that feels pretty darn good to me. We're gonna pull a pedestrian connection through here and some parking. And truthfully, actually it's gonna be parking. Just straight parking back here because we don't have access otherwise. So what we'll do is grab this. We got real lucky <laughs> because we absolutely would need parking back here. And it's funny, I added a road back here, but this really should have been parking. So we're going to get rid of that for the time being and we'll add in parking back here. Okay, tons of parking, but we don't have paths to walk in between the parking and the parking lot, uh, between the parking and the buildings. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm seeing some zoning too. Let's get rid of the zoning and we'll add this in. So basically what I want to do is make sure that if there are doors, we're providing access from the parking lot. So will this get used? No, <laughs> but does it make me feel good? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. Especially when we're going super detailed. Let's just let's just really do it. There we go. Feeling good about that. And it looks like I've lost uh, I've, I've uh, missed a couple of buildings down here. So we'll just add a couple. And again, these are our lower density buildings. There were a couple of Art Deco buildings that we did not place that would fit in really well. So let me search for those. There we go. It's the same building, but it'll look, it'll be just fine. So I like this. There's a little bit of a transition here and it feels very unique. What we're missing now is landscaping and we need landscaping in spades throughout this whole thing. And then we'll finish up with a little park over here to really bring this area to life. So let's go ahead. And the first thing I want to do is add in landscaping all the way around this ring road. And we've got only one thing that we could possibly plant there an evergreen. So let's go ahead and do it. And I did just so you guys know, I did think about using the intersection marking tool to actually place this problem is the loads are strange and I don't want to have to adjust the load for this uh, at all. So uh, basically they disappear if you don't have your load settings high. And then if you do, it's really taxing on your system. So it's, it's a, it's a, it's a challenging proposition. Now, what I would honestly love to see, so as I go through here and do this, I would love to see in the parallel road tool, the ability to place landscaping, because that's something I tried to do. You can do a lot of stuff in there, but landscaping for whatever reason is one of the few things you can't do. 
So if that feature ever comes, that would make it the most complete uh, finished version of that that it could be, in my opinion. Now through here, again, just some pedestrian amenities, nothing all that extravagant, just a place for a runner to go or a walker, just a recreational path. And I think we're good enough there. I think we're good enough there. I wanted to come through here as well and line this with some more trees. we go and now the rest of this is going to be just popping through here and adding in a couple of trees here and there to mix things up so I'm gonna to come to right here and I think that we can accomplish this at about this level okay so I've added a ton of landscaping from 10,000 feet in the air and I just want to see how it looks I tried to mix in some of our old landscaping and our new and make it feel really dense because I think that feels good. And what you see is that we've got neighborhoods that, that have a sense of order, that seem to make a bit of sense, that have landscaping that's purposeful and building placement that has a gradient of densities. And that's really what we were trying to accomplish. And I think it worked out really well. We've even given some of these buildings their own unique trees so that they'd have uh, a little bit of humanity right there, a little bit of nature in their backyards. So I really like the way that this has turned out and I hope that you do as well. So the one thing I did want to do as I was over here, I realized that there's an asset that I've been neglecting to place for quite some time. And that is we have these Nicolay Bay flags that the Federation put together. One of the moderators on the Discord and just a great person in general. So let's place one of these and I'll, I'll get these added to the pack. And what you see is <laughs> they're rotating around with it. It is, and apparently the wind, it's catching the wind just right. But it says Nicolay Bay has the logo of the series. Absolutely love it. Got the big and the small version. Absolutely amazing. So thank you, Federation, for putting that together. Absolutely wonderful. Okay, and now we got to get to this park. And this is going to be a very simple park. I, I know that you guys were probably hoping for something super elaborate. That was never part of the game plan for this. This is really just about getting people a place to go and get and see nature a little bit so they could watch the ships come in. So we're going to just run a simple path down here. This is interesting. For whatever reason, my trees are not going away. So we're going to need to keep an eye on that after the fact, come over and fix that. So here we're going to have a nice path that we're going to have some some kind of long bridges. Uh, but you might see this with a park. Bridges. Not that. <laughs> Okay, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. We do need to remove some of this landscaping that is in the middle of the path, though. Okay, feeling very good about that. We do have a bunch of sand that has made its way onto these little islands. We're going to take that down. Now, what we're going to do here is going to be just the most minimal stuff ever. And then, I think for the most part, we're just going to add in some viewing docks. So just places where you could go and check things out. And you know what my issue is? I bet it's collision. Sure enough, I have collision off. So now I should be able to get away with placing things. You could come here and take a look. And that is exactly what I was thinking in this area is just a place to come and view things. We can use move it, get these to be perfectly flat and add in some places to go fishing as well. Now, do we have that open and available to us? Ah, the fishing is actually part of the city park. So we have these, these piers and this is kind of where I would expect you to be able to go fishing. I'm going to turn anarchy on so we don't destroy this, but we'll add in a couple of these and we'll even have one 
tent camping site, maybe two. And of course now I have anarchy on, so. <laughs> now here's gonna be an issue. We've got power, so we're gonna need to make, uh, we're gonna need to drop a transformer box in here, which is unfortunate, but it, uh, it'll be fine. We, at least we have it available to us. And I think that that's pretty good. It's a very, very, very low maintenance park. Not a lot going on here. So I'm feeling good about that. I, we need a name for this park. I do not think that we got one. So Myrtle Brook, not, not exactly the name that I think that we should stick with. So if you have a name for this, let me know in the comments. And with this, got our little basic park. Let's, oh, one more thing, one more thing. I think that we need to, we've done a lot today. We've built a lot. And I think our city is really starting to improve. We've added a lot of population. We need to take inventory of what we've done and have a brief city tour. Alright, with that, we've got a couple of things that we need to do, and I want to start out with some fixes first, because I think they're the most important things to touch on. We're going to start out with one that I noticed during the tour, and that is this right here. I forgot today to change the color of these, so let's go ahead and get these colors changed, because we've got blue here, we've got our color pattern, and we're going to make sure that we're following that. Okay, so we've got purple now, so we've got a nice little... A rainbow of colors here and wow some of these buildings just look outstanding at night this street right here which is spruce street just look at this the the colors it's just so pretty except for this for whatever reason we got a bunch of blue right there but i'm good with it i think it's just absolutely stunning really like the way that this area is turning out so the other thing that i noticed is right over here near the elizabeth street pedestrian mall we've got a little bit of tearing right here so we're just going to control n in the node controller and you see that we've got some problems and i can't actually i guess i could fix that just a little little tug there and we're good to go uh the other thing that we could probably do here i'm guessing if we take a look in our unified ui yeah we've got an extra node there so I'll just get rid of that node. That's a better fix. And I saw one right here. Same deal. There we go. That is a better fix. We don't want to have cars getting stuck around here or anything like that. So uh, the next thing is one that was, that was talked about all, quite a bit in the comments. And that is the roundabout setup. I made some mistakes. And in fact, we're going to need to lighten this up. Okay. So as we look at this, we've got a number of problems. So we see that right here, cars are just driving over the median. So... That is a TMPE setup issue. So we're gonna go in and set this up. And the automatic setup, it's interesting. It looks like it's gonna allow you to take a right. It does not actually do that. So we are going to manually address the, adjust this ourselves. Now I have a concern here that I don't think we've talked about at all. I'm afraid that now that I've set it up like this, folks are not going to be able to navigate the roundabout all the way because we're missing a node in between. So this car, well, it, yeah, it's gonna, make a right so I just want to see if they are just taking rights through here if they're able to cross over and you can see that no vehicles are they're all just taking rights uh, very efficient for traffic flow <laughs> but the trips that everyone's taking are crazy and I'm guessing if we take a look actually we're doing really well <laughs> so if we didn't care about realism we would just go with this and be happy but alas we're gonna be good people add that node so that node will allow folks to cross or do that. <laughs> Just broke it again. So let me get that fixed. Okay, so everything through here should be functioning appropriately now. We have heavy traffic flow. Interestingly, it's made our traffic drop down uh, now that things are uh, set up appropriately, but that's okay. The one thing that I saw repeatedly through here as well is a general dislike for the grass in here. And I, I, that's fine, I get that. And I think that we can make an adjustment. We're going to just have a painted surface if that's the case. There we go. That's nice. The reason why I would want a painted surface here is that trucks could then drive over it if they had to. So that to me is a better situation. 
The other concern that we saw is that there was a stop sign on one of these on one of these rail crossings. So let's look for that. Right there. Right there. So we'll turn that off. Looks like it's the exact same thing there as, as well. So, so hopefully that fixes it. If we're going to have any sort of control, it should be a yield sign. That's the appropriate solution. So we'll add yield heading into the crossing. So we don't want to we don't want to prioritize the cars over the train the, over the train. That doesn't make a lot of sense. So there we go. That is a good solution. You know, and looking at this roundabout, we've got to apply the exact same solutions that we just did in our last one. So I'm going to do that off camera. There we go. That does look a lot better. So I appreciate that comment that came. These comments came from a, a lot of people, but the two that I noticed were from Jake Kaufman and Necto, who really pointed out some of the issues with painting, the issues with the rail and the issues with the crossing. So huge shout out to them and a big thank you. All of this makes me wonder, are we having some of the same TMPE issues in this roundabout as our last one? And if we are, I think that we're going to see it in the other ones as well. And it looks like we do have the same issues. We'll add the nodes and I'm going to do the exact same thing in the other roundabouts and we'll be right back. Okay, got all the roundabouts set up and they seem to be working well. Uh, well, there's some odd stuff always, <laughs> but for the most part, we're looking pretty good. So the one thing I did notice is that we set this to be a yield sign. And what I'm seeing is that there are some vehicles that stop at these every single time. Maybe not there, right here. Look at this. For whatever reason, the gate is now permanently down. So that was not what we were trying to do. So we're going to give this one more go. Okay, there's at least a train. <laughs> Just looking at it confused, thinking, what is going on? All right, so now the gate is finally gone up, so folks can switch lanes. I think we are in a better spot. I'm going to speed this up and see if this queue dissipates, because that was my main concern back here. So the other solution is just to let them proceed through. And then hopefully they yield. <laughs> so that should do the trick. We'll see. Hopefully this doesn't mean that cars are just getting smoked by the trains. I think we're okay though. I think we're okay. So let's look at our traffic flow. What has this done for us? 81%, 79. Uh, you know what? That's that's okay. And they're not gonna sneak past the train. They're gonna wait. There we go. There we go. Feeling good about that. So we got a couple more things, and I'm gonna go through a couple quick street naming conventions that we're going to add. The first one that we're going to start out is from Ted Bins. Uh, Ted Bins would like Semper Verde added to the street names. And I love that idea. One of the reasons I love it is you have a Verde Beach firm going ahead and naming a street through here. So what I think we're going to do is try to find one that's fairly prominent. So why don't we go ahead and I don't believe that Finch Street has been named. So we're going to name that right now. There we go. And now we have Semper Verde here as well. And I noticed that this crossing is not great. So we're going to straighten that up, make it better for pedestrians. That's what we should be focusing on. Oh, ooh, what is that? What is that bunch of nonsense? I hate to do this, but I think I'm going to have to. I'm going to delete a little portion of this and then add it back in, hopefully. It looks like that's about it. So that has created some new issues with landscaping but you know what I will take a landscaping issue any day of the week over the other issues that we were seeing so that'll probably be a fix that I make off camera one of these days let's make sure that this thing still operates yeah we're good we're good that worked looks like this bus route was sad for a second but it's it's good as well so we are going to uh, accept a win when, we, when we're given one so <laughs> that's what we do right there next one comes from Gwyneth who you know just an excellent person. She is a YouTube member. She's a patron. Just got married. Congratulations. And I, of course, I'm going to name a street. So we've already got a couple of the streets that you named. Uh, you named Juniper, Cypress, and Fir. We have a Fir, but we're going to go for a Juniper and a Cypress. So we'll come right here and we'll take Reed Street. And then she suggested that we rename the highway, Highway 360. So there's only one problem with that, and that's technically this should be Nicolay Bay Drive. We're going we're gonna to bring Nicolay Bay Drive all the way up here. So Nicolay Bay Drive will go all the way around there. That said, we've still got a highway here, and here we have roundabouts on either end of this. So this will be 
Highway 360. Excellent suggestion. And once again, congratulations. Thank you so much for all the support. It means the world to me. Next, we're going to go with Chaz. And Chaz says that I think naming some streets after animals that live in evergreen forest could be fun. Caribou, elk, squirrel, grizzly. I love it. I love it. I love it. So we are absolutely going to do that. Let's go ahead and we're going to take a couple of these And the next one is from Raxon G. And I, first of all, just thank you so much for the kind words. It really uh, means a lot to me when, when I see comments like this. So I really appreciate it. And Raxon says, every town has an Elm Street. And you know what? You're right. We need an Elm Street. And we're going to take Greenaway Street and make it Elm Street. And with this, we still have streets to name. So we've got Summit Street here, Alexander. Um, and I believe a few more even snuck through Smith Street. So if you have some more street names or, or, ooh, power, we're gonna have to take a look at that. Or if you have a name for this pedestrian district, because right now we're just calling it the Cooper Boulevard. Uh, Elizabeth Street needs a new name. If you've got a name, I want you to use the word pinecone in a sentence. And I will go through and pick some names from there. It looks like we're having a power issue. So we're gonna need to take care of that. So our consumption is just a little bit below our production and it's still creating issues. Oh, it's because we have areas like this. Oh, so we're gonna have to crank this up a little bit. And in the next episode, we're gonna have to resolve this power issue. So I'm gonna take this to 130 just to give ourselves a little bit of overhead. And that should at least get us through the rest of the day. So feeling very good about where we've ended up. And I hope that you do as well, because I think we're gonna leave it here. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider hitting the like button. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I really cannot wait to see you next time here in the city of Evergreen. Take care. Bye-bye.